What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Professor Dre Marley, coming at y'all with episode 6 of Higher Learning. This episode, we discussing our living ancestors. Let's get started. We live in a modernized world. Even the poorest third world countries have minimal technology. We have phones, computers, cars, planes, medicine, and infrastructure. Because of this, we tend to believe the whole world is explored and everyone experiences these luxuries. But there's still plenty of areas across the globe that are largely unexplored due to national preservation laws and terrain. And in these unexplored areas, there's still populations of prehistorical peoples. These are true indigenous peoples who are isolated from the outside world, either unintendedly or voluntarily, but chose to stay isolated, opting to keep their way of life, which is smart because usually when uncontacted tribes try to transition into the outside world, they fall to disease, poverty, and exploitation, oftentimes becoming part of human zoos where modern governments authorize tours through the tribes reserve. These indigenous peoples live in countries like Brazil, Papua New Guinea, Peru, the Philippines, Paraguay, Venezuela, Colombia, Russia, and Indian Islands. These countries have some of the last unexplored lands and uncontacted indigenous peoples. In many of these areas, these indigenous peoples are facing extinction because of the wood and oil industry. And places like Russia are disassembling indigenous peoples' organizations, making them more endangered. I just wanted to bring this to your attention today. It's best to leave them alone and not assimilate them into the modern world because they face dangers like disease. Because they are uncontacted and have been isolated, they don't have the same immunities as us. A simple common cold to us can kill them. Culture shock. They simply might not be able to understand some of our technology. Exploitation. Tribes like the Jawarwa was assimilated into the modern world and it decimated their population. They basically were the property of the government, tourist attractions. Because of this, governments now set up exclusion zones to protect them. But it doesn't always work. Wood and oil industries still find a way. They also face threats from religious missionaries looking for glory for converting the tribes from what they call the devil's last stronghold, which is of course full of shit. It's better just to let them be unless they ask. There's thought to be around 100 uncontacted tribes left in the world, the most being in South America, largely because of the unexplored Amazon. There are also many tribes who are isolated who opt to trade with the modern world. Tribes like the Awa of Brazil, the Jawarwa of India and all tribes of Africa, though there is none that's uncontacted. And I just want to add, these are not backwards people. They don't lack the intelligence that we have. They just rather preserve their way of life and they have all right to do so. There are many different tribes around the world with a unique culture, colorful history, and beautiful people in our most natural estate. These include the Yanomami of Brazil, whose population reaches 35,000. And the study of this group proved to Western civilization that the sometimes violent nature of indigenous people is because of us and colonization. And because of this, some of the first organizations built to protect indigenous people so they can live peacefully without foreign influence was built. The Kawahiva, whose existence wasn't confirmed until 1999. The Nanti, the Javari, the Dani, the Mbuti, the Dogon, Mashopiru, the Eorio, and these are just but a few. So we're going to discuss in depth the Sentinelese people of North Sentinel Island, arguably the most notorious uncontacted people in the world. Let's begin. The Sentinelese are an uncontacted indigenous people of North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal in India. They are classified under the Andamanese people due to the island chain and other tribes on other islands that's nearby. Those tribes are the Jawarwa, the Champagne, and the Nico. Unlike the rest, the Sentinelese forcefully rejects interaction with the outside world. Their island is now off limits up to three miles from the shoreline, mostly for your safety. Population size is estimated between 50 and 200. They are said to be a dark or shining dark with the line white teeth and they seem to be healthy with no signs of obesity. 
and prominent muscles and an average height of five and a half inches. They are hunter gatherers who mostly fish and they don't practice agriculture. They have tools and know the importance of metal. They also have a special interest in metal because other tribes said in the past they used to go to the island to trade for metal. Other than a string, both male and female, they are usually naked. They are descendants of African immigrants some 60,000 years ago and have been isolated on the island ever since. And because of this, their language is so far removed from anything we know of today. In other words, nobody can decipher their language, not even tribesmen from neighboring islands. And to be clear, uncontacted means that they know of the modern world, but they reject it. They've seen evidence of the modern world, they just don't want to be a part of it. Today, the Sentinelese people remain uncontacted largely because they kill anything that land on the shores. During medieval times, people wrote that the island was dominated by cannibals and warned people to stay away from it. Though this has been found to be false, they don't practice cannibalism as during a later expedition, they found that they actually buried the dead. The dead being a sailor that was crabbing on their shores. In 1771, the East India Company scout ship recorded passing it and seeing lights, but they did not investigate. In 1867, Indian soldiers were stranded on the island and had to fight off dozens of islanders until they were rescued. In 1880, an official expedition was established to make first contact. British naval officer Maurice Vido Portman led an armed group of Europeans convict orderlies and Andamanese trackers from tribes recently assimilated. A one mile search of the island found six people, two adults and four kids. They took them back to the mainland where the adults immediately died and the kids got sick. Maurice then sends them back to the Sentinelese island with gifts in an attempt to apologize and establish friendly relations. In 1896, an escaped convict found refuge on the island and was killed. It wasn't until 1962 that the Indian government finally decided to give contact another try. Research made it into shore and walked a couple miles into the woods. They seen huts, animals, fires, but no sign of people. They disappeared again. So he left gifts and proceeded to leave the island. Attempts after this varied. Some interactions were good. They accepted the gifts, then forced them to leave by threatening them. Other times were just bad, with the council being taunted by the islanders. A documentary attempt in 1974 ended with the director being shot in the arm. In 1991, there was more success. Once researchers reached the island, two dozen islanders came from the trees, a man held up his arrow ready to shoot, and a woman beside him pushes the arrow down. The man then buries the weapon. Then they proceeded to get the closest they ever got to the modern world. They hopped on the boats to receive gifts and coconuts and other fruits, and he also studied the guns, most likely being interested in the metal. After this, they started coming out with no weapons, but in 1994, expeditions were banned, since most interactions with the people were not positive and also the government worried about the effect the modern world would have on them. There was no official news about the island until the tsunami in 2004 which devastated the mainland but the Sentinelese people survived. So much so when helicopters passed over to check on them they shot arrows at it. It was ruled the community looked perfectly healthy. Then a couple years later in 2006 a fisherman legally crabbing the waters with his brother on the island was killed and they were buried for authorities to find later. And last but not least, the highlight of this episode, a case that happened two years ago in 2018 about an American missionary that tried to go to the island and convert the people. A man named John Allen Chow stopped his whole life when he heard the calling from God. This calling was to train for missionary work then to be sent out by the Christian organization called All Nations. He had a deep desire to convert the tribe writing about the whole experience in his journal. Some of the more notable things he wrote in his journal was, and I quote, Lord, is this island Satan's last stronghold where none have heard or even had the chance to hear your name? And also, the eternal lives of this tribe is at hand. And lastly, his final entry in his journal, I think it's worthwhile to declare Jesus to these people. Please do not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Don't retrieve my body. On the first day of the expedition against the better judgment of the Indian fisherman who took him, he canoed to the island where he tried singing hymns from the Bible to them, then speaking in dead languages. They laughed. 
A little boy then shot an arrow at him, piercing his Bible right in front of his heart. Then on the last day of the trip, he wouldn't accept failure. So he left all his belongings on the boat and only packed his Bible and some gifts for the islanders, then told the fishermen to leave him. He then rowed to shore. The fishermen came back later to find him being dragged by the islanders. Then on the next day, they seen that the islanders left his dead body on the shores. The fishermen who helped them were arrested for murder. John Allen Child's body is still on North Sentinel's beach. And that class is the history of the Sentinelese people, the most notorious uncontacted tribe, and an overview of the world's living ancestors. You did.